Okay, so in the previous video, I showed how to do this example on the left. So if you um, haven't seen that yet, you might want to watch that and try this example on the right. But here's how you do the one on the right. So we have negative 225. We have to find two other coterminal angles. So um, instead of going clockwise, 225, I can go counterclockwise, uh, 135. So that would be one coterminal angle. But that's because 135 and 225 add up to 360. That's a full circle. Okay. Um, or I could go around 360 like this and then go around another 135. So if you were just to add 360 to that, we would get 495. All right. So this and that represent two different coterminal angles for negative 225. All right, and if I wanted to express all coterminal angles, then I would take the angle negative 225 and add 360. And I want any multiple of 360, so I'm going to multiply it by n and make sure that n is an integer. So last time I wrote it like this. Okay, if you want to write in words n is an integer because you're not sure of that notation, uh, that's okay too. All right. Now, to summarize how we find coterminal angles, I mean, you just want to add or subtract a multiple of 360. So that could be 0, it could be 360, 720, 360 times anything, and you'll find um, the coterminal angles to the original angle. All right, so let's finish up the notes here with this final example. Um, but first, just a quick word from our sponsors, the Cartesian plane. All right, the Cartesian plane wants to remind you that the quadrants go in the following order. All right, that's quadrant one, that's quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four. So it's the same direction that positive angles go in. All right, so you want to know the quadrants because they come up a lot in trig. All right, so this first and last example here is... Find the sine and cosine of an angle in standard position with the point negative 8, 15 on its terminal side. Alright, so I'm going to start off here by drawing a y-axis and an x-axis. And um, I'm going to plot the point negative 8, 15. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but it would be somewhere around here. Alright, so that would be at negative 8, 15. Okay. Now um, I'm going to draw the angle in standard position. So the initial side goes on the positive x-axis. The vertex goes on the origin. And this would be the terminal side. Okay. Now how do we find the sine and cosine of this angle? Now we will learn a lot about this stuff. So this might seem new. But just tr try to learn it. And I promise I'll go over this more later on. But, um, so here's the angle in question here, all right? This is called theta. Now, because all our trig definitions are based on right triangles, we're going to use something called a reference angle. So the reference angle, again, is something that I promise we'll discuss more. But the reference angle is the angle that's formed with the x-axis and your terminal side. So it'd be this angle right here. So we're using this for reference to help us evaluate the sine and cosine of this original angle here. Okay. Now the reason why we do that is because no matter where the terminal side is, we can draw a straight line right to the x-axis unless it's on a axis. So if this was a 90, 180, 270, or 360 degree angle, we couldn't do this and I promise I'll explain how we do it in those cases. But if this angle is any angle that's not a multiple of 90, all right, we can construct a right triangle like we have right here all right, by drawing a perpendicular line either up or down to the x-axis, in this case down. All right, and now we have a right triangle here. All right, and we have it so that this leg we're going to call negative 8 and this leg we're going to call 5 to correspond with these points because if you were um, trying to like go from the origin, put it in red, to this point, you would go to the left negative 8 and then up 15. Okay, now I know this is a right triangle, um, but we're going to still call this negative 8 because it refers to this coordinate here. All right, and positive 15 because it's up. Okay, now we do need to figure out uh, this here, which is like a hypotenuse because it's across from 90. But we're going to think of it as the distance that this point is from the origin. Now, because we have a right triangle here, we could do 8 squared plus 15 squared equals r squared. Okay, We call this distance r, 
you'll see why in the next couple videos, but pretty much if you swung this angle all the way around, it would be the radius of that circle, okay? So if we did the Pythagorean theorem to solve for r, 8 squared is 64, 15 squared is 225, all right, that adds up to 289, so that's equal to the distance that that point is from the origin squared. Take the square root, and we get 17. All right, so now we're just going to do sine of the reference angle. So the sine of theta, all right, by looking at this right triangle, would be opposite over hypotenuse, 15 over 17. All right, the cosine of theta is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So the only difference is we're going to keep that negative, negative 8 over 17. All right, so the negative part might make you a little confused, and that's okay. But I promise we're going to learn different definitions for sine and cosine that use the point on the terminal side instead of lengths. So these values could be negative or positive as opposed to like the length of a side of a triangle isn't going to be negative or positive. But for now, I just want you to know that the legs can be negative, but the hypotenuse is always going to be positive because it's a distance. It's always going to be the distance that that point is from the origin. And even if you did the Pythagorean theorem with negative 8, all right, it would still come out to be a positive 17. So, um, so there you go. There's a little intro to angles in the coordinate plane. These ideas are super important, so master them, and the rest of the stuff we learn will be a whole lot easier. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day.